Hi folks, welcome back to the channel, and I wanted to do something a little bit different this week. I wanted to react to a couple of videos I've seen lately. And in these videos, they both talk about creator burnout, and I have a lot of thoughts. In this video, we're gonna look at what burnout really is, and particularly in the context of creatives. And most importantly, we'll look at tools and tactics to help prevent it. Let's go. Now, before we start this video, I do want to say I'm not going to be running a full commentary of either video. I'm just going to comment on a few different sections of them. And Nate's video in particular is a really great bit of thinking. and I'd love for you all to go and check it out, like it, share it in the hope that somebody from YouTube might actually get the chance to see it and see what's going on here. I've linked both videos in the description below. So meanwhile, let's start by talking about burnout. Now, so far on this channel, I've focused on the themes of tech and also productivity, but my professional background is actually in the world of business psychology. And burnout is a terrible, unfortunately, very common consequence of the way the world of work, certainly in Western society, has been shaped. So burnout is typically defined as both a psychological and a physiological response to constant chronic pressure. So that pressure might be self-made, or most often it comes from external influences. So people who experience burnout will often describe a fatigue and tiredness, and that's the way it's most often talked about. There are also other ways in which burnout can present itself. It can also look like a sense of cynicism and detachment from a job, and that can come along with withdrawal, irritability, and just a general sense of depersonalization and distancing oneself from the work that they have to do. Another way that it can present is a perceived lack of accomplishment and a sense of worthlessness. And unfortunately that can often lead to a real reduction in actual productivity. So it's possible that if any of you have one or more of any of these symptoms, you may be experiencing burnout. And I'd love to know in the comments, do any of these resonate with you? What does it look like for you? How does it present itself in your work, in your life? Now I'm gonna quote from some studies very shortly about some statistics around burnout. And I'm gonna link all of those in the description below if you wanna go and investigate them further for yourselves. So first up, um, FlexJobs found that 75% of workers have experienced burnout. I'm really surprised by this figure. I thought it would be much higher than that. And maybe if the study was reconducted, we might find that the figure is, is much more in the 80s or 90s. Next up, 61% of remote workers Workers find it more difficult to unplug from work during non-work hours. So interesting use of language here, the idea that we have to plug ourselves in and out of certain modes when we're operating, whether it's work, non-work. Do you think about yourself this way when you're at work or not at work? I'm interested to know. Next up, 67% of all workers believe that burnout has worsened over the course of the pandemic. Now, I'm a living example of this. I remember when the full scale and magnitude of the COVID pandemic really became apparent during the early months of 2020, I just threw myself at my work. And a part of that, my wife and I were doing our best to juggle childcare. We both had jobs. We both had a house to run. And whilst we did our best, as most families found in that scenario, it was an impossible task and it led to stress and anxiety and worry. And importantly, no one got the best version of anyone in that scenario. And I remember distinctly feeling in that situation that something psychologically was about to give. And I'll talk about what I did about it a bit later on in the video. So let's move on to talk about creator burnout. And I wanted to talk specifically about this angle. Now, in Nate's video, he talks about the YouTube platform in particular and how it appears kind of geared towards rewarding channels for posting fresh new content on the regular. And for me, I'm about 18 months into my YouTube journey and I'm starting to feel this sense of being on a bit of a hamster wheel. There are some unique pressures here when it comes to creating more, better, different content and knowing that if you stop, that's probably going to impact on you negatively in terms of either money or views or likes or whatever is important to you. So in Nate's video, he proposes putting a vacation mode onto someone's channel so that if people come and arrive at that channel looking for new content, they know that they're on a break and they will come back soon. And this made me think of your typical knowledge worker. Of course, in offices, we have like email out of office and we use that in different ways. And for most people, it's about setting expectations so that people know when they can expect to receive a reply from you and when they won't be hearing from you. It's about managing expectations and saying, I am taking a break. And it also made me think about an analogy that a lot of people use when it comes to this kind of content creation, that it's like running a race. And you know, in a race, everyone knows deep down, we need to rest, we need to refuel, we need to recharge, otherwise we are gonna to have to stop. But there's this nagging voice somewhere that says, oh, you know, if you stop, 
someone else is going to catch up with you and they might make that content that you're thinking about creating. Or worse still, there's a voice that comes through that says, if you stop making things, people will forget about you and they will never come back. Now, this kind of mental narrative is at the heart of creative burnout. And while I agree with what Nate says in his video about how platforms can work to ensure that creators aren't burning out in pursuit of making content, I do also think that as creators we have a responsibility to help support each other in taking ownership of the stuff that we can control and particularly the stories we tell ourselves about how things are. So check this out from that Ali Abdal video with James Hoffman. Right, like I really love coffee. I definitely got to the point where I was like, I should quit coffee. I should just, I, I, I hate this. I hate this. I hate my life. I hate working in this. I should just do something else. Because I worked in a stupid way and I burnt myself out physically and emotionally because people do that because the world says, good for you. Get the grind on. You know what I mean? What? It's your thing. It's yours. Pour yourself into it. And you're like, no, don't. Don't do that. That's really bad. So that narrative there, that's purely a story that we tell ourselves about who we are in the world and how the world operates around us. And we owe it to ourselves to hold that story up to the light and go, is that fair? Is that right? So I wanted to move on to share a handful of strategies that I've used and also that have been shared with me that might help anyone who's watching this video who's struggling with any kind of burnout. Or if you know someone who's struggling with burnout, by all means, pass this on to them and hopefully it will help. First of all, let's rewind to 2020. I was hopelessly juggling managing a psychometrics business while also trying my best to help out with looking after our little one and supporting my wife with the work that she needed to do. And like I said earlier, there was a point after about two months of super stressful 20 plus hour days where I knew I was staring burnout in the face. Something had to change, something had to give. And so I did two things that really helped. Firstly, I asked myself a question at the end of each day. Who got the best version of you today? And back then, the answer was inevitably, no one. And whilst I'd like to say the answer should have been my family, I have to be honest and say it very often wasn't. Back then, the story I was telling myself is that I had to work as hard as possible to make sure that we could pay our bills and make sure that when there was some time, we could enjoy some family time with money to spend, a house over our heads, food on the table, and so on. So this really important question about who gets the best version of you was a very important switch in adjusting the narrative to inform my own self-talk. And then I started using this question to become more strategic rather than more reflective. So when I was planning out my week, when I was planning out the month, I would start looking at particular days and say, well, who is going to get the best version of you today? Who needs to get the best version of you today? And that was a real transformational shift in thinking about how I was gonna deploy my energy. So the second thing I did was look very carefully at my time and gave myself permission to stop. So I found that stoic philosophy was really helpful in informing this approach. So rather than just worrying about, well, what would happen if I stopped? What if I just stopped some of those things? And so I did it. And you know what? It was fine. So part of this was putting some boundaries up that allow me to know when it was time to say enough for the day, knowing that anything that was left could wait until tomorrow. Even if it felt unsurmountable, very often it could just wait until tomorrow. And those boundaries helped me get the rest and space that I needed to make sure that I was able to tackle those challenges, refreshed and re-energized on the following day. So I did this recently on my channel. I was due to be away for a week and I was gonna work extra hard in order to produce an extra video one week so that I could plug what would be a gap in my feed. And in the end, I decided to put a message up saying, sorry folks, no video this week, I'm on holiday, here's some stuff that's coming in the future. And you know what? Nothing terrible happened, and in fact my views and metrics stayed pretty much exactly the same over the course of that period. So next up, another bit of self-talk reframing which is specifically for creators, and a shout out to my friend Lior for sharing this with me. So sometimes being inside a creative platform like photography industry or YouTube or being an artist can make you feel a bit like you're lost in this huge crowd. And yes, let's be honest, it is crowded. And sometimes being any kind of creator can fill you with self-doubt and questions like, well, why would anyone come and look at my stuff over here when there's all this other awesome stuff over there? But the thing to remember is that even if it feels crowded or even if it is crowded, you are part of that crowd. 
That is no mean feat and that is no bad thing. Why? Because there's a certain safety that comes with membership of a crowd. Your work is just as likely to be seen by another crowd member as it is any random passerby. Also, being a creative crowd like this means you've got this amazing network of built-in peers who you can ask questions to, you can learn and admire from, and who maybe you might even collaborate with. So folks, there are some ideas about how to tackle and manage creative burnout. And I'm so interested to know has anyone watching this video experienced burnout in the way that we've described it here? What did you do? What was it like? How have you coped? Let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to reply and respond to each one. Now, if you're watching this and you're struggling with burnout, first of all, I hope this has given you some reassurance that you're not alone and this is a really common challenge and it can be overcome. Secondly, I am gonna drop some links and resources below that you can go to that might also help beyond what I've shared here. And folks, I know this was a bit of a departure from my usual stuff, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a like. And if you'd like to see more like this, go on. Maybe even a cheeky subscribe. I'll see you next time.